Hi friends, this is Laura Krumzak with the Disney Slowdown where you're going to help me plan my mom's first trip to Disney. Today we are going to talk about Epcot and all it has to offer. Let's get started. <music> You know that Epcot is my favorite park. Last week, my video was all about Food and Wine Festival. If you did not catch that, I will link that here for you. Now, unfortunately, Food and Wine ends November 23rd. And I originally thought that the majority of the booths stay the same, and then they just kind of add some holiday offerings. That's not true. I went back and looked at both of our books, and I compared them from last year. And even though the booths were similar and some offerings stayed the same, the majority of the offerings were changed up for holiday theming. You know, one example, Canada always has some kind of a poutine and where it's beef and cheese curds and a beer cheese fondue. When they switched it over to the festival of the holidays, it was a turkey dinner. So we are not going to know what the food offerings are in Epcot until Festival of the Holidays kicks off, and I believe that's around December 1st this year. It's usually about a week changeover. So I will be waiting with bated breath for that changeover to happen, and I will be watching all the vloggers who went and ate everything. Now the one thing that we are probably not going to do is the cookie stroll. I don't know. We haven't decided. Last year, the cookies just weren't all that exciting. They're just not all that. <laughs> and my mom's gluten-free, so she's not going to care about those cookies. We'll see what they bring, if they have a couple of them. I can tell you that the Linzer cookie, I think that was in Germany, and the black and white cookie from Laheim, those were worth it. If we had to buy five cookies, I'd probably buy a combination of just those two. The one in Mexico had a lot of potential for being a great cookie, and it fell really short. But if you have kids, and you happen to be taking your Disney trip in December, during Festival of the Holidays, I've got some really good ideas for you. You can stay tuned to the very end. I will get you through the Festival of the Holidays, and you will get to do all kinds of things in Epcot. Your kids will love it there, I promise. First, I wanted to make an addition to my Animal Kingdom video. I completely forgot about the Super Zoom photo. We are going to be taking lots of pictures. I have the photo pass, so why not use it, right? Every time we see a cast member in a green shirt, we're going to stop, we're going to get a picture, we're going to get magic shots. We don't do that enough now. I wish we did that more. I just don't even think about it. I'm trying to train myself. Let's get magic shots. Let's get pictures. I wanted to do that at the Not So Scary Halloween party, but we managed to only get a couple of them because of the rain. But there are special magic shots in each of the parks. All four of the parks have what is called a super zoom. And in Animal Kingdom, it's across from the ride Mount Everest. It's in Asia. It's in the amphitheater. You actually stand in the amphitheater. And the camera is way across the lake, and it zooms in on your party, and then it zooms all the way out and you get this whole aerial view of the park. They have it in Epcot. It's right there by the big golf ball. So I added the super zoom to my list of priorities so I don't forget. Let me show you with the one in Animal Kingdom. And I also did one in Epcot. I did it with a friend of mine. Let's take a look. Okay, I just think they're fun, and since we already have the photo pass, why not get them, right? We're done talking about Animal Kingdom. <laughs> let's move on to Epcot. First things first, let's talk about attractions. There's been some question about Guardians, whether or not it was something that my mom could ride, and I'm going to say yes. Yes, it totally is. Samara and I rode it when we were at Food and Wine. Of course we did, and we were just really paying attention to it. I was just really focused on the movement of the vehicle, and it is 
smooth like butter. Seriously, it's like riding in a car on the highway or maybe one of those windy highway roads, you know, like down in the hills of Missouri. <laughs> Just, it's a lot of fun. It is the best ride on property and I, I will die on that hill, but it is so smooth. I can't do a lot of the jerky rides. I mean, I enjoy roller coasters, but if it's a wooden roller coaster, I'm not getting on there because I know those things beat you up. The only exception would be Seven Dwarves Mine Train. I was very impressed when we rode that because the car that you sit in is not on the track. It's suspended, so it swings when you go around the corner. So that one's also very smooth. I would say that's probably the predecessor to Guardians, but they nailed the track for Guardians 100%. <laughs> the Very Merry Christmas Party is happening two of the four days that we're going to be in the parks. Jollywood Nights is happening one of the four days. Then there's one day, happens to be my birthday, that no party is going on. That's probably the day that we'll start in Animal Kingdom and then end up at Hollywood Studios. But the other days, we'll probably start in Epcot. We'll get in the virtual queue at 7 a.m. We'll ride Guardians after we scan in. Hopefully, we'll get into an early boarding group. If not, we'll just play it by ear. But that's the goal, right? Get into an early boarding group scan into Epcot, go to Guardians, and then from there, we're either going to ride the monorail over to Magic Kingdom on one of their two party days, or on the party day for Hollywood Studios, we'll scan into Epcot first, and then take the Skyliner over to Hollywood. Now, here's something with the attractions. Besides Guardians, you have Remy's, which is way back over in France, and then you have Frozen, which is over in Norway. If you come in the front gate of Epcot and you're there rope drop or even before, they'll let you scan in, but then they kind of hold you right there at the golf ball, and then they will let you in about, it was about 8.55. They were like, okay, release the Kraken and everybody go. People are running. They're running to Frozen or we made an attempt. We're like, hey, let's see how long it takes us to get back there to France and let's see if we can ride Remy's. We took off, went around by Communicor Hall, down past Canada and the UK, over to France. But by the time we got back to Remy's, either the people who were let into the park early because they stayed on property or they started in the back by the International Gateway. They had already filled the line and when we got back there, it was like a 65 to a 70 minute wait and we said, we're not going to wait for that. So my thought is, one of the days I want to drive to Hollywood Studios, take the Skyliner to the back entrance of Epcot and start from there so we can rope drop Remy's. That's my goal. Now, we will see how it plays out because four days at Disney is no joke. If you are planning a trip to Disney and you want to do rope drop to fireworks, not take any breaks, I mean this in the best way possible. Please, 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 please do something physical to prepare for your trip. 20,000 steps is average. If you are not hustling your butt on a daily basis and getting 20,000 steps in in a day, your legs might fail you. <laughs> and I don't want that to happen to you because I know that you are spending a lot of money to go on this trip. And I know that you are spending a lot of time preparing. So the best thing that you can do is prepare your body. Start drinking more water. Get some good walking shoes. Go take walks regularly. Go to the gym. Do something resembling anything. I did a video called, Are You In Shape Enough for Disney? I'm going to link that here for you. If you didn't see that, I've just got some really helpful tips in there for you. Please, 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 please physically prepare yourself for your Disney trip. Any amusement park, honestly. We were surprised when we went to Universal for the first time. That was probably the first major park we went to. I mean, we always did a lot of walking, but you know, Six Flags was pretty self-contained. Legoland wasn't a huge park, but Universal with City Walk in between of the two major parks, we logged 30,000 steps. Nobody was prepared for that. So just do yourself a favor, start walking now. Mom, that's you too. Start walking now. And 
get some good shoes. Do not buy brand new shoes and save them for your trip. Start breaking them in. <laughs> if you want to know what kind of shoes to get, go to that video. I talk all about it. The other attraction that may have a longer line besides Remy's and Frozen, that's going to be Soren. That one is like a hang glider type of seat. You go in, you sit in it, it lifts you up. There's three rows. Actually, they do the same thing at Legoland and Emmett's triple decker couch. That was a lot of fun. That kind of reminded me of a combination of Soren and the Minions Mayhem in Universal Studios because you're just going everywhere. Soren's not like that. You do feel like you're in some kind of a hang glider and you're flying over the land and you're on this big omni screen that one is probably going to have another long line but even if they're you know 40 to 60 minutes i think it's okay it's it's well worth it the rest of the attractions are not really going to have long lines or at least they're going to have peak times for long lines and then they're going to level out and it, it shouldn't take you any more than 20 minutes to get onto a ride. And that's going to be Journey into Imagination with Figment, Living with the Land, the Sea with Nemo and Friends, Journey through Water with Moana. That's just a walking path, but it can get a long line. We've done it both during the day and at night. It's a lot of fun and it's very interactive. And you can see here just all the fun elements they have. You get to play with water as you walk through. It's a nice break too. It's kind of cool in there. It's very shaded and you can get wet, but it's just fun to play with the water. Spaceship Earth, that's one that people who I guess don't know or don't really plan, they're like, okay, we walk into the park. This is the first ride that we come to. We're going to get in line. But there are times during the day when that's a total five minute. Like you walk up the ramp and you're, you're in the ride because there's nobody there. Now Test Track, that would be off of our list anyway, but it is close for refurbishment and we, there's no opening date announced as of right now. And the other one that we will not do is the Mission to Space. There are two missions. There's the green mission, which takes you to the moon, and that one's not as bad. There are a few G-forces in there, but it wasn't bad. Then there's the orange mission, which is more intense, more G-forces. That one takes you to Mars. I've done them once. I don't need to do them again. And of course, next to Guardians, my next favorite attraction is the Grand Fiesta Tour with Donald Duck in the Mexico Pavilion. I don't know why this attraction, I mean, I'm grateful that it never has a really long line, but I just love it. It's it's my favorite. <laughs> Let's talk pictures really quick. There are going to be photography cast members all over World Showcase. I think most of the pavilions have a photographer set up, so we're going to get some really cool shots over there. Of course, the Super Zoom is right there at the golf ball, right in front. They also have a shot called the Small World. You'll recognize it. There's like a I don't know. It's a weird metal contraption with a globe on top, just a, a sphere. And then they'll have a, a dotted circle. That's basically where they're having people stand is around the small world shot. So everybody stands around and then you can make a crazy pose and it just kind of looks funky. Those two, if they're set up, are going to be right in front of the golf ball. So I want to make sure that we, at some point in our time there, we get one of those shots. Let's talk about the shows. If you need a break, there's always the shorts. Most of their entertainment is going to be live and it's not necessarily going to be scheduled like you would have at Hollywood Studios with the Frozen sing-along or the Beauty and the Beast stage production. But I do want to sit down with Turtle Talk with Crush. Grandma probably won't get any pre-interaction with Crush, but when we went on a Disney cruise back in January of 2020 and the grandmas came with us, they met a cast member, I think right as we were boarding, I think we just like we got in there and we were kind of looking around before we could even get to our room and they were talking to somebody who was helping them and he asked them where's your dining and where are you going to be sitting well he was very good friends with crush we were in animators palette that night and crush came over to the screen by our table and sat there and was going grandma's 
grandmas. So Crush got the message to talk with them, but it's a fun show. It's entertaining, and I think Mom would like that. The rest of the entertainment, I mean, aside from the World Showcase pavilions, the sing-along with Beauty and the Beast, that was fun. So in France, there are actually two shows in the same location. In the morning, they'll start Impressions de France. I haven't seen that in a very long time. That would probably be a good one to hit. Before 10 a.m., you start the Beauty and the Beast sing-along. That goes until 6.30. And then after that last 6.30 show, then it goes back to Impressions de France. That's an opportunity just for some cultural entertainment. You also have Canada far and wide. These are things that if we have time or or if we just need to sit down, maybe this will be something that we can hit. The rest of the entertainment that I think we're probably going to want to spend the majority of our time with is during the Festival of the Holidays, each pavilion has some kind of a Christmas storyteller. So they stand out there. I think it's just kind of intermittent between set hours. You can walk through the pavilion and you can stand there and you can listen to the Christmas storyteller from that country. Or they're going to have musicians. Last year, Israel had a musician. He was just a guy there with a guitar and he was singing songs and having a good time. Then of course you have the stage over at Morocco with the belly dancers. I recorded that last time we were there too. also have Voices of Liberty in the America Pavilion. Just walking around World Showcase and trying to catch all those storytellers, that's going to take a lot more time than you think. <laughs> But I imagine that's probably where we're going to spend the majority of our time. If you grabbed my Disney planning guide, then you can see that there are a ton of characters all over Epcot. It's a great place to find your princesses. They're all over World Showcase. But we, for the first time, went to the Disney Visa card holder photo opportunity, and it was a mystery character. They wouldn't tell us who was there. I had no idea who was actually going to show up, but look who it is. That's right. We got to see Mickey and Goofy. That was a nice surprise. It was about a 20 or 30 minute wait, I think, but all I had to do was show my Disney Visa card so they could see that I was a Disney Visa card holder. If you don't have a Disney Visa card, there are some additional perks that you might be interested in. I've got a link in my description box. It's just a referral code. It, it will show you the current promotion. One of the best Best ones though is you do get points back on anything that you purchase at Disney. I don't know that Chase in general has fabulous perks. So if you have another rewards card that you use more, then by all means do that. What I like about this one though is I don't have to take my rewards and put them on a separate gift card. I can take my rewards, log on to the website, and then apply them to any Disney purchase. So the points that I've acquired, I can go in there and knock out some of the food that we bought at Food and Wine. <laughs> So it's not like I have to spend more money. I kind of like that feature. It's nice that I can get a couple of free snacks. I mean, who doesn't love that? There are intermittent perks to being a Disney Visa card holder throughout the parks. Have you taken advantage of any of those perks? I would love to know. I'm rather new at this game. So tell me anything that you've experienced. If you are finding value in this video, I would really appreciate it if you would like, subscribe to my channel, and and hit that notification bell so you know when I load another video. And also, please do me a favor. I would love it if you would share my channel and share my videos with your friends. Just send them the link. Say, hey, this is somebody you should check out. I really appreciate your support. My goal is to get my channel monetized so that my husband will come to food and wine with me. I know he shouldn't need to be bribed, but he is. He doesn't want to go to Epcot. But I told him, you are coming to Epcot food and wine with me. So let's get this man to Epcot, shall we? And if a mom's trip sounds like a glorious vacation to you and just like something that makes you tingle, come find me on Patreon. Let's get this conversation started. I would love to coordinate a group for just moms to go to Disney and have the best 
time. We will figure it out. There's always ways to save money. So hop on over there and say hi. Now, as promised, if you are going to Epcot with your children, sometimes I see in the groups people say, oh, we just have to skip Epcot. My kids are too young. Yeah, they'll like Remy's. Yeah, they'll like Frozen, but there's really nothing else for them to do. Well, get them involved in the action. I think Epcot's done a really good job of putting those activities there for the kids so that they can be entertained and then mom and dad can floor the world showcase and the rest of the park at their leisure and do the things that they want to do. So here's an example. There's always going to be some kind of a scavenger hunt. You can either buy the card and get the stickers or you can just take a picture of the card and then look for the items that are on the scavenger hunt. Kidcot is always there. That's a lot of fun. Play Disney parks. Let your kids download the app and they can sit there and play along with the DuckTales adventure while you're doing something else. And as far as the food booths go, it doesn't matter which festival that you are attending. If the current food crawl doesn't appear to be enticing to anybody, that's okay. Have your children choose one thing that just kind of pushes their envelope a little bit and then reward them with a treat. It could be ice cream. It could be a basic cookie. It doesn't have to be food and wine and the cheese crawl, or it doesn't have to be the cookie stroll. But I will tell you that if you're doing the cookie stroll, I recommend not eating all of the cookies that day. We ran into a couple who had been doing the cookie stroll all day. We were there at the last booth to get our reward, which was chocolate soft serve. I think it had whipped cream and crushed candy canes on top of it. So it was like a chocolate peppermint sundae and then another cookie. And they were just like, oh good, another cookie. <laughs> We brought thin little Tupperware containers and Ziploc bags. So we were able to put the cookies into those bags, into the containers. And you know what? We ate them the next morning for breakfast. Because what's the difference between pancakes and waffles or cookies? Really? Nothing. Not in December especially. And you know what? I was the best mom. But it was also at the Festival of the Holidays where my kids decided they really wanted to try sushi. And I was like, for $10, this is going to be fun. It's either going to be highly entertaining or they're going to absolutely love sushi. Well, guess what? It was both. And I created a short. If you did not see that, I'm going to link that right here for you because everybody <laughs> needs that in their life. <laughs> I want to thank you for joining me here today and thank you for helping me plan my mom's trip. Was there something in here that I forgot? Is there something that you went, oh no, why are you skipping this? Or you didn't think of this? Please let me know. I'm trying to write everything down. You know, just like I totally forgot about the Super Zoom when we started talking about Animal Kingdom. So please give me your comments, your thoughts, your suggestions. I am so excited to interact with you and to read them. And as always, we'll see you on my next video.